Now, back in Excel Magic Tricks 1776, we saw how to use the amazing Microsoft 365 filter function to extract invoices with due dates between 1 and 30 days. In this video, we want to see how to do it with Power Query. Now the first thing I want to do is import this parameter 30 days back into Power Query. To do that, I'm going to create a name for that cell. So I click in the name box, type days back, and enter. Now with that cell selected, I go up to Data, Get and Transform, and click From Selection. In the Power Query Editor, I want to right click the number 30 and click on Drill Down. That creates the correct formula and step to extract the number. Now we can use this number in our other query. Now go to Home, Close and Load, Close and Load 2. Only create a connection. We're only using it inside the Power Query Editor. Click OK. I can see the query over here. Now I click in a single cell in this Excel table. Click From Selection. Now I want to name this query, and I want to name it something different than the default name from the Excel table, something like Pass Due Invoice and Enter. Now we go to the Date column and click the amazing Filter option, Date and Time Filters, and we're going down to In the Previous. It says Is in the Previous, and so far the default is Days, which happens to be correct for us. I want to type 30 for the time being and click OK. If we look up in the formula bar, table.selectRows filters our table. And sure enough, it used date is in previous. There's the name of the field. And instead of that 30, I'm going to double click and type the name of our query, dates back. Hopefully, I spell it right and enter. Of course, it's polite. It's days back and enter. By doing that, it links the results here to that number back in the worksheet cells. And that's it. Now I click Close and Load, Close and Load 2. I want it as a table on the existing sheet. I'm going to put it in G4, click OK. And that's it. Now if I come up here and change this to 2, well, flat out the advantage to the worksheet functions and the filter function is that everything instantly updates. If we're using Power Query, we have to right click Refresh. Also, it looks like I made a mistake. Power Query is pretty polite. I'm going to double click. And here, instead of Date Time, I'm going to click the icon for Data Type and change it to Date. Click Close. And there you go. We can use Power Query, but you have to refresh. Or you can use worksheet functions like the amazing filter function, which automatically updates when our input changes. All right, I want to hear in the comments which one do you like. I guess for me, I'm definitely using filter. But if the data was coming in from some external source and it changed a lot and I had to refresh anyway, well, maybe I'd use Power Query. All right, we'll see you next video.